Okay. Got my hair cut. First time since all this crap started. By my favorite bar bartender who's back there. Bartender. Too. Bartender. My favorite. <laughs> Well, she could be a bartender too, I guess. Well, my favorite barber is back there video, video on this thing. And let's see, where else. oh yeah, we went down to the J-Way Cafe. The cafes around here are starting to open up, so we went down there, got in there, pulled in with all the pickup trucks and all the cowboys, and it was the, some Baptist prayer, prayer day on Tuesday. So they were all there this morning, a whole bunch of them. And the, restaurant was full when you take into consideration that half the seats were blocked off. But uh, it sure was good to have a have a Spanish omelet with some jalapenos too many this morning. And well she really loaded it up for some reason. My hash browns and a biscuit. Anyway yesterday or the last time we made a video I think I told you I needed some new brushes. And we needed to go to Joplin to get me some new brushes. So as you can see here, I got me some new brushes. These were, these are for acrylics and watercolor, both of these. I mean, all of these right here. Why they got these long handles on here, I guess that's for, you know, these people who like to paint from a distance. It's the only thing I can think of. Anyway, I got a mark on here that I'm going to cut them all off about there to get them down to my size. So uh, we'll talk about these in a minute. Here's, here's the brushes I bought when I retired and moved back to Oklahoma. These were school brushes bought at a place in Tulsa called Triangle Blueprint Company, since gone out of business. They're terrific brushes, and they were cheap to me, being as I just retired, and we were kind of watching our pennies back then. Not that we're not watching our pennies now, but maybe not as much as we were back then. And these have really served me well over the, what's well, been over 25 years. And you can see this brush here probably used to look like that one right there at one time. But as brushes will do over periods of time, you can never get them all the way clean and the paint builds up down here where the hair meets the, uh, I don't know what you call that right off the bat. Words are losing, I'm losing my words these days. Ferrule, is that a ferrule I guess? Anyway, it gets kind of hard down here. It's soft up front, but hard down here, but they've lost the point. They're great for other things, but not for, you know, fine painting. And I've got a whole slew of them here. This one, this one here is pretty shot. It's clean because I've kind of cleaned it out in some lacquer thinner. But unfortunately, it's totally lost its shape. These, some of these others, like these little ones, I've, uh, I've cut them off straight on the ends, as you can see here just straight across on the ends. There's no point on there anymore. And I use them for lettering real small signs. You know, you can you can uh, get that flat area like that and you can uh, put it and draw with it just like a tip of a ink pen. Not a ballpoint, but the old style ink pen. Anyway, these things, they've served me well, but I think I'm going to retire them over to my unused brush can, which uh, still gets occasional use, but not like it used to. Now, before we go on any further, over here I've set out some brushes. I'm going to show you how I condition my brushes for use. These brushes here, these are liners. They're for when you're painting a real straight line. You want a straight line. You know, you want a nice, even, straight line. And as you're moving along with one of these, this one here is kind of stiff because I just got through treating it. As you're moving along with one of these, your hand has a tendency to jerk. But that a lot of that jerking, the long filament here, is sort of like a shock absorber. It, it deadens a lot of that jerk that you might have in your hand. 
by staying straight. You know, so you can paint a nice straight line even though your hand might move just a little bit. Now, if you don't take care of these things, they'll separate and they won't hold your point like this one here. See so here how this one's no. frayed out. It's in there. To keep that from happening, I fall back to my old tried and true method of keeping my brushes clean by using my wife's uh, hairspray. That's all this is. Hairspray is sort of a a will real weak lacquer. So I usually just spray me out a pool of it. And I know I know this sounds crazy, but it works. And I dip my brush in there and I'll just roll it back and forth. Like that. And then I kind of squeeze off the Squeeze off the excess and reestablish that point and just let it harden, just like that. And like this one over here, it, it's hard. But because that lacquer is so weak, or whatever, it, you know, it might not be lacquer, lacquer, I don't know what, what the hell, it might be shellac or something like that, I'm not really sure what it is. But anyway, whatever they put on it. It makes this thing hold its shape, reforms its shape. And then you can just wash it out. Put some water on there. It's kind of working back and forth in your fingers. Put some of this soap on there. Just clean all that crud out of there. And it looks like it's coming apart, but it's not. So it goes right back to its shape again. So you just, you know, just use that soap to just clean it out. I don't use these brushes very much. So uh, what I do, you know, after I'm after I'm drawing that line, see how nice straight line that makes? And I have all different kind, kinds of these liners depending on, you know, the type of uh, thickness of line I want to make. Here's one, here's one that I've cut way down to just a few, few uh, hair in there to paint a real fine line. And by dipping it in that stuff over there, It'll retain its shape. Here's one that I took out of the old uh, scrap can here. Now this one here, I will put it back over here, roll it around a few times, like I did before, kind of reform it, and then just set it aside to dry, and hopefully it'll keep its shape. But these other brushes, they're beyond beyond help so we just won't mess with those anymore. So let's just take take the one of these brushes out and see see what it'll do. They didn't have a very big selection there at Hobby Lobby. I don't know why. I guess all these wise because they're stuck at home and guys too I guess. They pretty well cleaned that place out. Wash this out, not knowing what what was in there. They look like pretty good brushes. Seem to have a nice point on them. 
some of these brushes, see if I can find one here. Can't locate it. Anyway, they're not cheap. This one costs eleven dollars. That one's ten dollars. This one's six bucks. And this one down here. It's somewhere in between of there. But when I'm looking for a brush, I don't want one that has a real I don't wish I could find that brush. I thought I had one out here. Let's see if this is a no, that ain't it. Darn it. No, it's not over there. Anyway, I ordered a whole bunch of brushes from Dick Blick. It's a mail order outfit. And I got these brushes, and they weren't worth a crap. But, uh, this isn't one of them, but the hair on it on here was so, I mean, it was so uh, soft and loose, you couldn't put a point on it if you had to. And, uh, no, these are all triangle brushes. But anyway, you get what you pay for. So if you're going to go down to Walmart and, you know, buy a pack of half a dozen brushes, they're not going to last you very long, and they're not going to work very well. If you go to a place like Hobby Lobby, you can generally find you some good brushes there, but you're going to pay for them. Get the best ones you can. And that's, that's the best advice I can give you as far as brushes go. Now, let me go ahead and cut these others off. These. I'm not going to be able to use these today because i got a saw off the handles. <laughs> but I hope they're good ones. And that they'll last a long, long time. Anything else? Oh yeah, getting back to our carving. Remember yesterday? First of all, before I take this apart, let me talk about the feathers a minute. These feathers are pretty big sized feathers. They're way too large. So I have a smaller feather here and uh, I was just looking at this this morning. Let me take these off. You know. And it's a tight fit once that wood swells up, which is a good thing. See my little fluff here, it's all dried, looks really good. Okay, now this is just about the right size, or the full size feather, okay, for an Indian this size. So that's about, actually I think it might come out to about here. But I'm seriously thinking of downsizing my feathers, because this is just a little too large, I think. Looks good, but it's just a little too large. I went ahead and painted my uh, uh, black stripe here, and I've decided not to put the. Where'd my pencil go? Decided not to put the points on this blanket because in selling the carving, someone's going, or probably the majority, are going to come along and see this figure on the internet or at a carving show or wherever you might see it across from in my gallery or wherever and they see these black lines coming across here probably 90 percent of the people aren't going to know what what those are they might think I made a mistake <laughs> not that I don't ever make mistakes I make a heck of a lot of them but anyway they they might not like those so I'm just going to leave them off and just have this one solid black stripe here. I think that'll be enough, okay? But this is a point blanket, all right? Now, another thing, remember yesterday, or the last video, I was telling you about no matter how much paint you put on here, you're gonna end up 
with uh, these little holidays, as my friend always called them. See, there's one there, there's one there, back here, look all over it. You just have to watch out for them. There's one there. And just come back and, and uh, paint them out again. Don't ask me why they show up like that, but they always seem to. Okay, first thing we're going to do today is the feathers. All right, I've painted them white. Gave them a nice coat of white paint. Everything's dry. So the first step in painting my feathers is I have this spray can of dark walnut paint. All right. I shook it up earlier so it's nice and ready to go. Now here's what I'm just kind of look for a splattering effect, just like that. Let that bleed out there. Okay. Just like that. All right. You just. That's what I want right there, right now. Put this away. Set that side to dry. things to clog up after you have about a quarter of the can to so you have to go down by me. So where were we? All right, I'm going to have to leave those feathers over there to dry and then we'll get back to them in a little bit. All right, let's get, get, get this guy taken care of, get these brushes out of there. Another thing, I think if you look at some of the old videos, I paint on a piece of glass inside of a paint box. And the reason I do that, like I said yesterday, I can look down through there and see the transparency of the washes I put on my painting. And another good thing about it is I can come back and squirt some water on there, get an old uh, knife blade, and just come in here and clean that all off. comes right off. Throw it in the trash. Get me a paper towel and scrub things down and I got a new nice clean service to work with. Like that. So, do some touch up here. I don't think I'll squeeze any black out because I don't need any. I'm a small brush. And go hunting for hunting for uh, holidays. Okay, now for the braids, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the braids uh, burn umber. Where's that color right 
there. Sort of a dark brown, it's not transparent. Load my brush up and just paint them. And I'm not going to bore you with watching me do all this, so we'll just cut this out and then we'll come back after they're painted, okay? A little out there to get rid of it. Like I said, start up here and just kind of look for a splattering effect, just like that. Let that bleed out there, okay? Just like that. All right. So where were we? All right. I'm gonna have to leave those feathers over there to dry, and then we'll get back to them in a little bit. All right. Let's get 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 this guy taken care of. Get these brushes out of here. Another thing. I think if if you look at some of the old videos, I paint on a piece of glass inside of a paint box. And the reason I do that, like I said yesterday, I can look down through there and see the transparency of the washes I put on my painting. And another good thing about it is I can come back and squirt some water on there, get an old uh, knife blade, and just come in here and clean that all off. Comes right off. Throw it in the trash. Get me a paper towel and scrub things down, and I got a new, nice, clean service to work with. Like that. So do some touch up here. I don't think I'll squeeze any black out because I don't need any. I'm a small brush. And go hunting for hunting for uh, holidays. Okay, now for the braids, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the braids uh, burn umber. That color right there. Sort of a dark brown not transparent. Load my brush up and just paint them. And I'm not going to bore you with watching me do all this, so we'll just cut this out and then we'll come back after they're painted, okay? Okay, getting back to these feathers. All right, uh, the paint I sprayed on there is dry now. Now what I'm doing here is I have some dark burn umber, very dark burn umber, because I went and took some regular burn umber and I about half and half it with my some of my licorice here to give me a real dark color, which uh, pretty well matches that. And what I'm doing here is just kind of bleeding it out putting spots on here
Paint the edges. Making the feather look like a feather really does. Making sure the edges are painted. Get my uh, hair dryer. of the feathers. Sure, I got my yeah, I just painted again. This is a real nice color. Just about out of it. But I got lots more. When I find a favorite color, I buy me a lot of it because I don't know what their ordering policy is up there at Hobby Lobby or at some of these other places that have where I go to look for these colors. But half the time I go up there, the color I'm looking for is gone. Now, Looking for a one. Good liner is a good one right there. Oh, my bubble there. All right, now you can see my line here that I burnt or drew down in there.
Kind of went off track here, didn't I? I wish every line worked like that one. And there it goes off at an angle too. Now that's good because this is the side everybody's going to see unless they turn it around. Let me see. Let me see if I can't paint that out there. Fix that line. We've got a couple of them there. There we go. Okay. As Judy looks at me and shakes her head. Alright, I'm going to get my yellow ochre here. Well, I got enough here in the cap, I think. That'll work for me. Maybe. Okay, try that. Get rid of that. Get my See, I like that where you got the dark and the light. It looks really nice. Now I'm going to give me some yellow. Find me a dry brush here. Small one if I got one right there. Put that in there. Just put some lighter yellow around there. Give me some parchment. This is white, but it's kind of an off-white. 
when I was in the Foreign Service overseas with the State Department. We'd live in these apartments, and no matter what uh, what you, apartment you went into, they were all painted off-white. That was the State Department official color. Oh, didn't want that. Everybody's catching my mistakes today. I just want to hit the very tippy tops. These fluffs, not much. Like that. Good enough. Put that away. red color here. Mm, look at that one. Mm, like that one. Our engine red. That's red all right. Like a dentist office in here. Get my mudstone again. Sure, you got it on. Looks pretty good. Put that away. Looks good. Put that away. So feathers are done now. Now when we uh, varnish these, all these colors are really going to become real deep and rich. So they look kind of flat now, but they won't later on. Okay, getting back, <laughs> getting back to this. Well, I tell you, we're jumping all over today. 
finding me a I'm gonna use that one. Let's see what we got here. So I'm gonna try something here. This is burnt or raw sienna, excuse me. Nice nice color. Squeeze me out just a little bit, don't need very much. <laughs> got my favorite brush here, one of my favorite brushes. When I bought this brush a long, 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 long time ago, back in the early 70s, because I was overseas at the time, I paid $35 for this brush. I can't remember what hair was on there. It must be sable or something like that, but it's a good brush. And I use it for one thing. Get a little color on there. Brush it out. I'm not worried about doing the underneath here that's going to be back against the, the blanket or the clothing in the blanket. I'm going to get me some uh, burnt sienna, which is sort of a reddish color. Just a little bit of red on there. A little bit more than that. And that's just about what I want. See the the darker colors staying down in the well Judy's getting in there close, staying down in the lower part, but the highlight is up on the top, which is where I want it. So that's gonna look nice. I'll put that in there. And we're gonna set the head aside. I'm not gonna do those eyes until the very last thing, because that's what really sets the attitude of the piece. So, I'm 
What? I think we're just about out of time on this one here. In the next one, we're going to devote it to the body and uh, the blanket. Because I don't want to rush that. There's a lot of, a lot of steps in here. Uh, we'll probably be able to do the blanket, pretty much, and the shirt. Maybe the neckerchief, but we're going to have to do the beading and stuff later on in another video, or maybe two videos, okay? So until then, I uh, hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll talk to you later.